Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Tim. I am the founder and owner and uh, main <laughs> main guy of Axel Studio. We are a very small indie developer from St. Louis, Missouri. Um, I've been making games basically my whole life, and I've been using um, Flixel since about. I don't know, 2007 or whatever it was like brand new, the original Flixel. And I've been using Hex Flixel um, since that was brand new. Again, I don't know exactly what time, but uh, it's been quite a while. I can look up real quick here. <clears throat> so what, uh, what this series is meant to do, or meant to be, is um, just sort of a... Uh, code along um, series. Uh, 2017 looks like is when I was started using Hexflexel. Yeah, sounds all right. Uh, so yeah, so I, I'm just gonna make some basic, simple, arcade games, and ho hopefully you guys will code along with me at home, follow along. Uh, you can pause. Hopefully, see what I'm doing. Um, and be able to eventually uh, make the same game that I've made and maybe tweak it a little bit on your own uh, and see what else you can make do with it. Um, I'm, I'm trying to do, I'm trying to replicate in many ways classic 80s arcade games, simple games, you know, Breakout, um, Pac-Man, Snake, things of that nature that I can kind of show how the framework works and how to use it without getting overburdened by, okay, well, now i got to worry about, you know, 6,000 sprites on the screen or how these, you know, classes all work together and everything. So we're going to try to keep it simple um, and sort of, you know, <clears throat> make some faithful homages to these, other, these old games. So I do want to touch on that a little bit. Um, Early 80s games, pixel games, you know, Atari, early arcade games, NES games, Super NES games, that era of games are done, were done totally differently than what we're doing today, what we do nowadays. Um, they had different limitations, they had different hurdles they had to overcome, um, there's some games that are out there that I don't know how they managed to do what they did, you know, tricking hardware to do things a certain way, just, just to get an effect that totally breaks what they should have been allowed to do. Um, you know, things like that. <clears throat> we are in a lucky period of time where we don't have those limitations anymore. We have almost basically the only limitations that we have now are memory size on the computer that's running the game. And, um, that's basically it. We have so many better tools now. We can open up in Photoshop and do, we can put photorealistic images into the game at high resolutions and they look great and work great. And, you know, you can do a game, I've seen games in Hexflixel that look like that or look like, you know, cartoons, hand-drawn cartoons and stuff like that. Um, when you try to kind of go back in time and emulate these older games, um, you almost have to sometimes put in more work to make it look faithfully old <laughs> uh, than you would if you just made a simpler version of it that is, is, is new. So I'm going to try to avoid doing things like, you know, um, scan line shaders or, um, you know, doing some of those things that the old games had to do, like pixel... Um, uh, precision, you know, checking and things like that. Cause we have better ways to do it now. You know, we, uh, we I say better, they're different. Uh, they're newer. We know we, we can have like hit boxes on sprites, uh, that are loaded from an image if we wanted to. And that's not something that was available for the old arcade games that we're going to try to, to copy. Um, you know, it's just a different thing. So we're not going to make an exact Pac-Man clone that looks exactly the same and, and behaves the same. 
we're going to try to get close with what we have on hand, you know, um, what we can do these days. Um, we're not going to do, you know, a game that has a, a two pixel resolution. It looks like it would be on a, you know, a tiger handheld game just because they have different limitations. Um, there were tigers, right? Is that what they're called? Yeah. Those old LCD games. Um, but I'm going to try to bring those games forward into the future, you know, in the current day and show you how, you know, we would make those similar games with the way Hexflexel's framework is built, um, how it's designed to fun to function, which is different than say, you know, unity or game maker handles things. Um, and so before we get started, one more thing I do want to clarify. Hexflexel is not an engine. It's not a game engine. It's a game development framework. And there's a, there's a distinction there that I think a lot of people gloss over or overlook or don't understand um, what the differences are. Um, when we talk about an engine, typically that means that is a piece a, 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 a system of code that has been written to handle running a specific type of game that can be modified slightly you know give or take um doom the first doom they built an engine using a code uh, some kind of coding language and some kind of framework they built an engine that made doom and then they were able to go on and make you know other games using either the exact same frame uh, the, sorry, the exact same engine but with different sprites and different after assets and maybe a few tweaks here and there um, and then move on to a different engine for their next, you know, maybe Doom 2 has a different engine that was written in the language or the, or the, or the framework that we had, that was in. So when people say, oh, well, it's Hacks Flexible Engine. No, it's not. It's a framework. It's giving you the tools and the, um, you know, built-in functions and um, basically the scaffolding to let you build an engine out of it if you wanted to. And you can build, and, and typically you build an engine to make a game run one thing, but you can easily, if you wanted to, take that engine and say, I want to make 100 different games that are all using the same engine. Um, right. It's kind of, a, kind of difficult um, to, to explain. So Hexflixel runs off of OpenFL, which runs off of Hex. So Hex is the language that we're using. That's H-A-X-E. Um, it has some similarities to like C++ or ActionScript even, ActionScript 3 or JavaScript or PHP. If you know any of those other languages already, Hacks is going to feel very familiar to you. They have a little, slightly different nuances here and there. There's some things you can do better than some of those languages. There's some things you can do worse than some of those languages. And maybe there's a few ideas that they have different names for, you know, or, or different different ways of presenting something. You know, maybe arrays work slightly differently in hacks than they do in JavaScript, but the idea is there, and if you want to make something that does something almost exactly like a JavaScript array, you probably can get it to work. You know, there's a way to make it work. Um, so hacks is the language. It's sort of the bedrock of, the, of what we're going to do. On top of that is, is the, um, well, I guess, library, OpenFL, which is, um, I guess the best way to describe it is a collection of tools and objects and things that are inspired by or based on or made to mimic a lot of things that are in Flash, ActionScript. Um, that's what the FL stands for. The idea was to take things that are in ActionScript, um, because ActionScript was such a great, like, you know, and like, I'm um, not engine, sorry, like a great thing, I guess it's only a language, like the Flash ActionScript thing was so good for people to making games that, um, you know, they, some, uh, the, the creator of OpenFL, um, want, basically, I think, wanted to extend its life to be outside of Flash, to separate it from Flash and Adobe itself, and to make things... So, basically, it has a lot of the same ideas going for it. You know, bitmap... Bitmap... Uh, 
sorry, bitmaps and graphics and things are going to work similarly to how they did in Flash, so that if you came from a Flash background, you can, you know, call certain functions and they do almost exactly the same thing that they did in the Flash world. Um, so it's basically saying, hey, Hacks, we're going to use your language and we're going to, we're going to bring over these, these objects that are uh, designed to imitate or emulate a lot of Flash things. And it's not one-to-one. -one. It's a little bit different. There's a, there's a few nuances there again. So, for instance, one class you might, if you're familiar with a specific class that was in ActionScript, it might be a little bit differently different now in OpenFL than you're used to. For the most part, we don't have to get too deep into the OpenFL. It's sort of there. Um, kind of, It's kind of like the go-between between what Hackflix is going to do and what Hacks wants us to do. Um, yeah, I wish I had a good way to explain it better than that. <laughs> Hopefully it's not too confusing. Um, but it's going to give us the things that are, that are going to be great to use for like the graphics and the sprites and the, you know, animations and um, um, sounds and things. All of the things that HackFlixel is going to give us access to, it's going to interface with OpenFL to tell Hacks how to use those things, how to make those things work. And then HackFlix, of course, is the framework. And that's going to be the main thing we're going to do. It's going to have, it has its own system of here's how we have, you know, here's how a game should be working for the most part. Uh, it's got things like states, um, uh, substates that help you, like, you know, figure out where you're going to put your things. It's got collision detection built in, sprites, animations built in. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully it makes sense. Um, the, the main thing to keep to, to keep in mind here while we're working on, on on these games is we're sitting on top of a layer of, of, of cake. Hackflix will is at the top layer. That's what we're going to do most of our fun stuff with. Occasionally, we, might, we could and might need to get down and open a fell a little bit. But no matter what we're doing, we're all using we're using hacks to do everything with. Um, you know, even though a class might be defined in Hackflix, it's defined in a way that Hacks has to understand how to use it. So we're going to see a lot of, like, you know, the way the keywords work in Hacks and things like that. Um, hopefully it didn't bore everybody to tears and you're still here to, <laughs> to follow along uh, after a long rambling explanation. But I just want to make, make sure people understand the difference between, you know, an engine and a framework um, going forward because um, it's the thing I see online all the time. People are like, oh, the Hackflixel engine is like this. Well, no, it's not an engine. Someone made an engine out of it. People are allowed to take that engine and make other stuff with it, maybe. It's different. Okay. So I think the first game I want to open up to here is um, a game everybody makes. <laughs> I think everyone does this uh, as an example game at some point in their life. Um, just because it's simple, it's fun, everyone understands the core mechanics of it for the most part. And it's easy to extend, so we could, we, you know, you can always take it further. Um, and of course, that game that I'm talking about is Breakout. We're going to make a basic, simple Breakout clone. Um, for those of you who don't know what Breakout is, um, there's probably been called a thousand other names as well over the years. That, you know, people have made their own variations of it, marketed it. Um, it's basically one player Pong, where instead of bouncing a ball between two paddles you're bouncing a ball uh your paddles in the bottom of the screen bouncing a ball upwards towards a series of bricks that you break so the ball will hit a brick it'll break the brick and bounce back towards the paddle and the goal uh, is to clear the screen without having the ball fall past the paddle uh usually you'll have lives you'll have like three lives um three balls, and every time a ball is lost, you know, it resets the, the paddle, and you get points for breaking blocks, um, and if you get a, a high enough score, you might get a, a, an extra ball, um, and usually the bricks are worth more or less points. Some bricks take more hits to break than one hit, and sometimes the game will progress over a series of levels, 
that will have different layouts for the bricks, so it makes them more interesting, um, depending on the game. I think what I want to try to do here today, without extending this to project too long, is to get the basics of a level that just says bricks, it has walls off the side that the ball will bounce off of, the paddle that moves, the ball that bounces around. And if we can get to that point, we can probably call it quits. You know, we can say we're good. And what I also want to do with these projects, so, so like next time we get together, maybe the next project will be a totally different game, maybe Pac-Man or something. But maybe we come back to the breakout one again in the future and add more to it. Maybe we change it so that now there's angled shaped bricks or there's um, power-ups or there's new level. You know, we can do that. But for today, I just want to get one level the goal is to get as many points as you can um, before losing three balls. And every time you clear the stage, you get a bonus, but the stage just resets again and you keep going. So if you clear level one, you get a bonus score, and then you go to level two, which is exactly the same layout, um, and you keep going. Uh, that makes sense. So, so okay. I'm also going to try to avoid using any external sprite graphics. I'm going to do all of this this project with drawing the graphics with the, the built-in tools for drawing things. Um, it'll be pretty simple. You'll see. Um, we can't. We could open up Photoshop, draw everything, export it as PNGs, import them all in the game. Um, that way, that'd be totally fine. But for this simple game, I don't think we need to do that. We're just going to use uh, drawings um, the shapes of the things and it should work out just fine. Okay, so you've been staring at this screen <laughs> this whole time. Uh, it looks super, super boring. The first thing we're going to do here is create the um, the blank canvas, the blank template for the game. Now I've already gone ahead and I've installed HacksFlixel and Hacks and OpenFL and VS Code, and all the stuff that I need to do this. If you haven't done that, pause the video, go to HexFixel.com, uh, HexFixel.com, looks like this. Boom. HexFixel.com, getting started, and you're just gonna go, gonna go through these steps. Install hacks and install hacks flixel and do the hello world and then you install Visual Studio Code. That's what we recommend. Hacks develop was a thing. It's not really in development anymore. I guess it still works, but everyone's kind of um, moved on to VS Code just because I think it's more of a standard for the industry and it has a lot more going forward. It's more up to date. Um, you could technically do all your coding out of like, you know notepad if you really wanted to um but as you'll see with vs code it does a lot of stuff for us so like i said go through these things it might take a little while to download some things get it all working make sure the hello world works for you before you continue and um i'm not gonna go through it all here because it's just a lot of steps that are uh, you don't need to know about all right so everything's installed the flexible command is installed Bam, that works. Okay. So uh, if we want to make a new project from the template, there's a blank template that, was, it, that comes with the, the Flixel tools. That's all we need. So we're going to go ahead and go Flixel, TPL, and I, I'm in a directory that I want to put my game into. This is going to create a new directory here in a second. So my documents folder is going to have the new game in it, the new game folder. And we're going to call this Code Along breakout okay and we're gonna also oh, the end flag just tells it what the name of the project is going to be there are other flags you can use you could set the height and width of the game here if you want if you know what it is off the head off hand um we'll probably use whatever the default is for this game we might tweak it later who knows um <clears throat> you can do some other flags here but this is generally all you need to get going boom it opens it boom and it's going to open up vs code if you set up to do so if not, you can go to the folder where, where that was created, which is here. And you can right click 
and say open the code and it'll do the same thing it just opens it up all right don't care about the welcome page let me go through some stuff real quick here just to show you what we're looking at when we start out so this is the blank template that is created for vs code if you if you're doing another um uh, IDE other than VS Code, you might not have this folder here, you might have some other stuff here, not a big deal. The main core of a Flixel game is the project.xml, uh, the source folder that has all of your classes in it, the assets folder which has all of your assets in it. Typically, by default, they're broken out on these four folders. Depending on your game, you may have more, you may have less, who knows? But that's what we got by default. The source folder typically comes with this asset paths always, a main, and a play state. And as you go through making your games, you'll probably add more and more and more and add some folders and stuff. But this is basically all you need for a project for a game to work is these these things. This is this hex format is for VS Code. You don't need it there really. But it's it's basically the assets folder. If you have any, if you don't have assets at all, you don't need a folder at all, really. Um, you basically just need these three things and a project.xml. Okay, I'll go through what they are. Project.xml is going to <clears throat> tell hacks when you compile this, or I guess it's OpenFL. Lime, Lime and OpenFL are like sort of the same thing. I don't want to get into that. <laughs> when you build your project, this is going to tell the, the what the final result is going to be like for the most part. You're going to have in here things like the size of the window, um, the color of the window, background, um, assets, what your assets are going to be embedded or not, or, or where, they're, where they're located at. Um, your icon for like windows or whatever you know that kind of stuff like this icon up here for your game the title of your game all sorts of fun stuff like that is in this 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 is like the main thing okay i'll go through these real quick uh this just tells us what the project is we don't ever touch this app is going to tell us basically what the name of the name of the project is called um, the tiles would be what we see at the top of the screen, you know, on the title bar. The file will be the name of the file. I was going to call it CA breakout. Uh, this tells what class should start this main. I'm pointing at the screen. You can see, feel like you can see that. This main right here. Uh, it's just saying go here when you when you run. Go to the main. And we'll show you that in a minute. Uh, version is arbitrary. You can change it to whatever you want. Typically, you you update this whenever you have a new version going out. And company would be who made the game. Um, yep, it'd be your name or whatever you want to put there. And I think it's usually just on like in the right click somewhere on the in, you know the properties of the, of the thing. <clears throat> Probably not going to get doing this series at all, but you can make your own preloaders. Uh, the default one is kind of a cool little blue screen. It has the logo fade in. It has a bar at the bottom that says progress of loading. It's, it's fine. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if you need this if you're not building for Flash, the Swift version, which I think most people are not doing anymore. We're not going to do any Flash at all, really. But if you were, I mean, I, I'd leave it there. I don't, I don't know. Don't touch it. Don't need to mess with it. Here we get to the window. So the window tag is telling us what we want our window to look like when it launches. So first of all, on all targets, we're going to set the defaults. We're going to say we want it to be 640 wide, 480 tall, uh, FPS is 60, the background color is black, and the hardware and VSync true and false respectively. You can play with those. I think there's other flags in there you can mess with. Don't have to mess with them unless you know what you're doing. Um, Leave them alone. Uh, again, I don't mess with this one most of the time, unless I know what I'm doing. That's for HTML5. If we're doing a desktop game, we want it to start out not full screen. We can switch swap that if we wanted. We can make it not be full we're sizable. If we, want, you know, we can make these changes if we want. Um, if we're doing mobile, we do want it to be full screen. 
and the width and height are zero, which is basically saying match the size of the screen. We want a full screen app. If you know what you're doing, have fun with these. I almost don't even touch these ever on any project unless I absolutely know I have to change something. They don't usually need to be changed. All right. <clears throat> We're going to go down here to the path settings. This builder just says where we put the files when we're building them. So when I go to build this game, it's going to create a folder if there isn't one already called export. It's going to make a folder for the 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 target I'm building for. So hacks of hacks I can explain is a uh, cross platform. You can build for tons and tons and tons of things for hacks. You can build for Windows, you can build for Mac, you can build for Linux, you can build for mobile, Android, HTML5, everything. So when I build this, since right now, if you see down here, I've picked HTML5 as, as the default. It'll make a folder called HTML5 and an export folder. Put a bunch of junk in there, and then the bin folder inside that folder will be the final finished exported game project. If I switch this to Windows, it would be export slash win slash bin would be where the ending files are. So if you want to change that, you can. Um, one thing that I've done in the past, like if I'm building, let's say I'm building HTML5, but it's going to two different websites. Like I want to have an HTML5 game that's on itch, but I want to also have another version that's on Newgrounds that has metals and stuff, so I have different code. I might use some kind of flag here to say, make a new export if I have a flag set on, you know, make a separate export folder for a different target outside of these targets here. Simple enough. Uh, source path, oh, sorry, source, source path is where your source code is. Assets path is where your assets path is. Again, they're fine as is. They, the default's normally fine. Uh, you can use some fun stuff with this if you know what you're doing. If not, don't mess with it. Uh, so all this does right here says we're going to use Flixel for this project. Okay. If you want to add other hacks libs, which are basically just other libraries that add more functionality and more features, you can add them here. Uh, here's some default examples that are on the file. Flixel add-ons is really good. Flixel UI, I don't think is really used much anymore. Maybe it is. Um, I think it's kind of outdated, but look it up if you want to try it. And if you want to use Nape, you have to download it, but it's kind of an example of how you would use it here. Uh, again, not, nothing you need to worry about. I'm actually going to, I mean, you can just delete these if you don't care. It doesn't matter. They're coming out, but nothing, don't worry about them. Hacks Defines is just some more stuff you can play with. These are going to change the game a little bit. Um, if you don't want to have the recording system available, you can turn it off. I don't, or sorry, you turn it on here if you do want it on. I don't know what it really means anymore. I haven't used it in forever. Um... If you're having problems with cursors and things, you can set these. Um, if you're never going to do mobile, you could take these out. For, or, or sorry, if you're only going to do mobile, you might turn these off or whatever. Uh, if you don't want to have a gamepad, you could do that. You know, if you don't want sound, again, probably best to leave these alone. You don't really need to do much in this file ever, um, unless you really know what needs to be changed and why. The main thing is you can change this stuff up here to whatever you want for the most part. And you can kind of tweak these settings to whatever you want, you know, based on how you want your game to work. Um, sorry, I feel like this is really rambling and boring. <laughs> Hopefully that's just some background on this, this file here that you can understand. Let's go look at the main, uh, that HX. So again, up here we're telling it, when we start our game, go to main. If you wanted to, you can change that. I've never had a reason to change it. Main. Super simple. All it really does is it sets up a sprite object. Um, it makes, sorry, it makes the main class be a sprite object from OpenFL. And it adds a new Flix game to that object and tells it uh, how wide and how, how, how tall it should be. X, or I'm sorry, width and height. By, by having a zero, it defaults to whatever's in here. Um, and go to the play state when I start up. 
if I want to have a menu state, you would change that to menu state, and then the menu state would go to play state when they hit play or something like that. That's all That's all you need to get a game started is this. The reason why you have these here, these, these height and weight, ah, height and width, is that you might have a game that you want to be always at four times resolution or whatever. So you might have... You know, this is how it's the game's window size is, but this is how big the actual game. Close this one. The game actually is whatever this size is, which could be smaller or larger. And it'll zoom, basically zoom in. So if that if these numbers were a quarter of what the window size is, the game's always going to be quadruple size on in the screen. Oh, I'm sorry, zoomed in. Does that make sense? <laughs> um. We might change that. I don't know if we need to. We'll play with it and see. There are other settings here. Um, zoom. Frame rates. Do you want to skip the splash screen? Do you want to start full screen? We're not going to mess with that again right now. This is the bare bones. That's all we need right now. And then, So play state, generally speaking, is where all the magic happens. This is going to be the state that we're in when the game is being played okay uh flick states are kind of like you can kind of think of them as scenes in a flash movie you can only be on one scene at a time um so if we switch from play state to a different state the play state would be totally gone it'd be closed out it'd be deleted it doesn't exist we're only on the other state and if we go back to the play state the state we were on before is gone, doesn't exist, it's not, there's no information about that state anywhere in the system, okay? Um, this, this state is the one that's running, um, and it's the one doing all the magic to make the game work. Uh, it has a lot, a flick state has a lot of stuff going in for it, it has a lot of like um, um, functions and properties and things that we can get to a little bit. But the, the biggest two that you're going to want to deal with are the create function and the update function. Create is basically is before the state is actually loaded, we want to set up everything that's going to be in the state. Okay. Most of the time a class, you'll have like a new, which would be like when I in, in, initialize this class, set everything up in it. Saves are a little bit different because of the way they can be transitioned and things. Um, we usually want to do all the setting up in the create function uh, first, and then when the when the function when the state actually becomes active, it works a little better than if it was a new. Um, same thing we're not. So here, what we'll do in the create function here in a minute is just kind of set up all the things that are going to be in the game. Um, we'll set up the ball, set up the paddle, we'll set up the blocks here, and anytime this state is started. It's going to call the create function and set everything up for us. Update is where the magic happens. So the game is running in a loop. The loop is saying, go through the update of my current state here. I can't, I'm pointing at the screen with my human fingers. You can't see. Um, update says, it basically is starting around here. And the game is going to say, okay. The elapsed is the number of seconds, the time in seconds since the last update started, I want to say. So if it takes 0 0.004 seconds for this update, the process, everything, and then go to the next update, that elapsed is going to be 0 .004, whatever it is, 0 .004. That's going to give you a handle on it's basically your frame rate kind of it's basically saying all the stuff in my game takes that long to do an update routine okay um comes in handy because you can do things like set up a cooldown for a button by saying uh has this much time elapsed since that button was pressed yes or no or you can basically say you know i want this thing to take this long and elapse is basically telling everything how to do things we might get to play with that a little bit so the super dead update says, uh, basically, call the flick states update routine, which is going to update everything in the flick state that's been added to it. Okay. If an object has not been added to the flick state, it will not 
by default get its update routine called by this line right here. You can call it manually, but if the object isn't added to the state, it won't get updated normally. What does that mean? Well, things like velocity, uh, acceleration, um, animation, I believe sounds, maybe sounds are a little different. Um, things like that are all automatically handled collision, uh, maybe, not really. Things like that are handled by the update routine, okay? So if we tell an object I want to move at a certain velocity, but I never call update on it, then that, that object's not going anywhere, it's sitting there. So you want to make sure that you always have your super dot update in your play state, in, the, in your states. Most, if not every object that's in Hexlixel has its own update routine that is called, that does its, its thing, you know, a button, the update routine in, the, in, in Flix buttons basically say, check to see if I'm in clicked or not and update my state, my status, things like that. Pretty important. Um, and there's other stuff that we'll get to as we go through this a little bit. And we can add our own functions, of course. Um, if you don't really know much about object, like class-based programming like this, uh, I'll try to give you like a, a quick one down here. Somewhere in, the, in Flixel is a class called Flix State. okay? That state has in its code, I can actually bring it up and show it to you. Um, okay. It is a flick state extends flix group, and I'll, I can explain that a little bit. Basically, it's saying we're using flix group as a basis for the flick state code. Okay. It's got a lot of stuff in it. It's got all the functions, it's got all the um, routines in it. Anything not in here. I bet you it's in Flix group. Okay. There's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. You probably don't even need to get into the weeds of right now. Okay. The bottom line is our play state is an object that we're creating saying we want to be a version of fixed flick state that has our own code in it on top of the code that's already in flick state. Okay. So everything that flick state does on its own, we're going to do in play state, but we might add our own stuff on top of it. Override basically says, uh, okay, so we have a function called create in flick state. I want to make my own copy of it, okay? So I'm going to override it. So normally, if, I, if this was gone and play state was called and it said, okay, call the create function, it would go to this function that's in here and do whatever it says to do in there. Uh, oh. We can find it real quick. Three. And in this case, nothing in it is empty, which is just because it's meant to be there to be called. So if we don't do, if we had nothing in this at all, if, if, if that was gone, it would call this function do nothing. Because we're going to override it. Uh, that's the wrong place. What am I doing? There we go. Because we override it, we're saying instead of calling, calling that create, call this one. Do our stuff, whatever we want, and when we call super, we're saying now go call that other create that we had before. So do all this stuff, then go call this version with nothing happens in it, which is fine, and then come back and do some more of our own code, maybe. Okay. Um. That's what the super means. Is basically saying go and call the actual the actual extended version of that code. And not so big a deal in create because again, this create doesn't do anything. This, this one doesn't do anything. But if we made our own special version of flick state that had its own, everyone had the same thing in create, it would become more important. And like I said, this one is very important because as you see, this update does do something, okay? So when we call this super update and pass it elapsed, it's gonna go over here and do this stuff, okay? Which is important that it does that. So we can't leave that off of there. 
but we can do our own thing before it and after it because we're saying this is our our version of update you guys bored yet uh, i'm sorry this is <laughs> i'm just trying to make sure you guys understand some of the basics before we just jump in uh so yeah i i you know, let's just go. Let's just get, let's get going. Okay, so. <clears throat> what's the most important part of the breakout game? Well, I don't know most important, but the paddle the player uses to smack the ball around, right? That's going to be the thing the player focuses on the most. It's the thing the player can use to do stuff. Um, it's probably the most important element of the game besides the ball itself. So let's go and make that. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to actually make it as a new class. Okay. There's probably different ways you can do this, but I'm going to go ahead and just do a new class over here. I'm going to new file. Call it paddle.hx. It goes into the package. Um, the package is just telling it where in the code this thing needs to exist. If you put it into a folder, for instance, let's say you put a, made a folder called objects, package would need to be objects so that it knows, and then you would call it objects.panel everywhere else in the game. We don't need to worry about that much here. I mean, I don't often split, unless it's really complicated, I don't usually split things up. Uh, I've got Copilot turned on, which we'll see if that gets distracting or not. This is not at all. <laughs> Helpful. Uh, we're going to say class uh, paddle extends blitz sprite. Okay. So our paddle object is going to be a flick sprite. We're going to inherit all the junk that flick sprite has in it, and we're going to make it our own by doing some things. <laughs> uh, yeah. Paddle. Oh, hold on. And new paddle. Sorry, I don't, the uh, I might turn it off the copilot here in a minute because I think it's a little bit distracting. Like I'm, uh, uh, I'm not going to worry about these this stuff for the most part. I'm gonna, uh, we can miss it later. Wait, I could have it pass some parameters and in, in other classes we will, but this one I know exactly where I want this thing to be at all times. Um, I don't need to worry about it. So I'm going to say super. And I'm going to say make graphic. Remember I said we're working using any loading in the images. I'm going to make, I'm going to, there's two different ways to do a sprite. There's load graphic. There's a lot of more ways. The two basic ways. Load graphic says, go get the graphic. This is what it actually showing me on the screen right now. Go get the graphic from my assets path and use that image. And you can use animated images if you want. Just have a sprite sheet. You can have texture packed images if you want. Make graphic is basically make a rectangular graphic of a specific color of this size. So for this, I don't know why it's showing me an image there, but I'm going to say, well, um, let's try 128 wide and 32 high. And I don't, yeah, it's the one's color. Yeah, you know, I don't know why it's showing me that as, a, as an option. Flix color dot white. Flix color is a helper class that has a bunch of like um, handy tools for colors. It has a whole bunch of preset colors in it. Um, we'll go look at it. It's got a bunch of like preset colors or basic colors. But it's also got a bunch of tools for like you know, I can set the lightness. I can pick, I can pick blue and make a lighter version of blue with this. Um, I can pass it RGB. I can pass it in an integer. I can pass it in. I can make a CMYK color if I wanted to. So it's got all these nice functions in it that are useful. Um, usually, use a lot to just make these colors. I just use the you know, it's easy to grab these simple colors. I could have just put that in there. Uh, here it would work just fine, but um, that's just as easy. You know, I might use other colors later on, whatever, it's fine. All right, why is it saying that? It's weird. All 
I'm gonna turn this off, I think. Uh just for now, I'll use it later. It's just it's just showing me stuff. It's like, why is it showing me that? That doesn't make any sense. Uh that's fine. <clears throat> so what this is gonna do is make it make our sprite be a graphic that is 120 pixels wide, 32 pixels tall, and white in color. That rectangle will be white. Um and that's simple enough for right now. We can do some other stuff later on. If we really wanted to tweak this later, we can replace it with an actual graphic. We could use a gradient color. We could use... Um, I don't know what else we want to use. But the, the thing, we could do different things if we wanted to. This, this is fine. We're going to put it... in the center of the screen near the bottom. So I'm going to go screen center. This is the helper class it will center the object on the screen and I could tell it only center it x or y axis it doesn't matter because right after that I'm just going to say y equals uh, flix g dot height minus let's take it about let's do 16 pixels away from the bottom of the screen minus the height of the object so if we right now it'll be 32 but if we tweak this later on I don't have to come back here and check that as well. So we're saying center it on the screen. It'll be right smack dab in the middle. But then also just switch the Y value to be 16 pixels above the bottom. This is what this is. Flix G is a helper class. Height is the height of the game, um, which is not this value, but this value. So if these were different, it would go by this, not this. If they're the same, it doesn't matter. Uh, 16 pixels gap between the bottom of this image of this object and the bottom of the, the bottom of the screen. Okay, and that's enough right now. If we go back over here, we're gonna say, why is it put my cursor there? Public bar. I used to do everything private. I thought, oh, no one's, you know, I need this to be on this clap. I've since been switching and getting in the habit of everything is public. Um, I have not noticed it causing any problems doing that. Because sometimes you'll find out 10 hours in a project, 30 hours in a project. Oh, wait, this other class needs to get to that object somehow. And I can't do it because it's private. So I've just been doing publics lately anyway. It's fine. I don't know what really matters. What is it? Paddle? Paddle? Is it paddle? All right. We're going to come down here and we're going to say paddle equals paddle. Oops, sorry. New paddle. Add paddle. Uh, we can also say this another way. Actually, we'll do add paddle equals new paddle, which basically is the exact same thing, but it takes up one less line. That's fine. Uh, so we're making a new object that is a paddle. We're assigning it to this variable called paddle, which is defined up here as a public variable, and we're adding it to the state. You have to add it to the state for it to show up and or get updated by default. There's quick tricks around that for the really savvy people to know what they're doing. Add it to the state is basically the way to go. If you make an object and you can't find it when you go to run your game, chances are you didn't add it to the state. Um... Yeah, so that's all we need to do. Let's just go ahead and see. Let's run this and see what happens. So I want to do HTML5. Yeah, we can do that. That's fine. A hash link is usually when I debug in um, because it is running in a similar way to like what Windows would be so that I know that if, if it works in hash, hash links, I pretty much know that it works in Windows, but it takes like a fraction of the time to build it. I've been having problems with hash link lately. Um... So maybe between this recording and the next one, I might just test this out and see if it even works still. Uh, HTML5 is fine. We'll do debug, though. So down here at the bottom, we got some little things going on that it might be useful to see. Um, this tells us that we're on the master branch for Git, which we're not even... I haven't done that yet at all yet. Anything for Git for this project. Uh, this is for Git... There's no problems in the code right now. This would show up if we did have any that knew about. Um, 
We're using Lime to, to code to compile, which is fine. We're using HTML5 slash debug, which is fine. I could add some other stuff to here if I wanted to, like I could do clean if I wanted to. If I want, so clean would automatically, would always rewrite the folder that's out there for rebuilding. And what is this? This is um, spell checking. I don't know. All this other stuff is just junk. Probably don't need to worry about. But this is the main thing. So if I want to change what I'm building for, I can just click that to change it. And then I'm just going to hit F5 to do a debug uh, session. It's going to do its thing. We'll see what happens. Hopefully it just works. And all we should really see right now is that we see our panel on the screen. That's it. A white little bar at the bottom of the screen for now. There we go. Wow, that's amazing, huh? Look at all this real estate up here. Yep. We got our default Netflixel cursor. We got the name of our project up here. That's what I set up in the project.xml. And we got a bar and a mic. Make it shorter and also move it away from the bottom a little bit. That might be fine. That's basically the framework. It's gone bad, but I'm not too worried about that right now. That's probably because I'm recording. Uh, yeah, so we're good. Yeah, it looks good. Let's go tweak that a little bit. Like I said, we're going to make this half as tall and twice as far away from the bottom. All right, I'll have to go check it right now. We'll check it later. So what do we want our panel to do? We want it to be able to move around the screen, right? Uh, basically left and right. Um with some kind of buffer on the edge. It can't go all the way to the edge. I'm going to gutter. Uh, when the player presses certain keys. Right? Right. So the way we would do that is pretty simple. We're going to do an override. Override. Uh, update. Okay, like I said, every, every object is an update. Um, we can do this after the update. That's fine. We're going to say if g.keys.any pressed. Uh, we're going to say if they're pressing A. So we're gonna, oh, sorry, we're going to do an array. A, left, or J. Move left. Okay. Else, if these not any press, we'll say D, uh, right, and L. Move right. Easy peasy. Oh, that's weird. Okay. Now obviously, it's not going to actually move. We just put a comment there. Um, Let us see. How's the best way to do this? Let's just go up here and say public static inline var speed float. It could be an integer. We'll leave the float for now. It's probably fine. We're going to try going 100. Sure. Why not? See what happens. We'll test it out. Uh, Uh, a very speedy speed. Oh, I pull on this one. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Flick sprite have inherent motion physics built into them. They have velocity, 
they have a max velocity, they have an acceleration, things like that, built in behind the scenes. If we were to go look at the flick, uh, the flick sprite thing, it's all in here somewhere, okay? You can dig through it on your own time. Suffice it to say, there's already logic for velocity built, built into the baked into the thing. So the way we're, we're going to do this right now, and we'll probably tweak this and change this later on, we might even switch it to using some kind of acceleration later on, is we're going to default by saying every time we come to the, end of the update routine, set the velocity x to zero. Stop moving. Okay, if it was already moving, stop moving. Then, if, if the user is pressing one of the left keys, a left or j change the speed change the velocity x to negative speed we're going to move left negative is always left to the left positive is always to the right negative is always up and down is is positive uh if they're not pressing one of those three keys but they're pressing one of the other three keys move right in the same speed use that speed to move right okay so if it comes in and i'm not no one's pressing any keys Velocity will stay zero. If I am pressing a key, it'll switch it to one the right key, the right speed for that frame. Come back around, and next time, if I'm not, I'm not no longer pressing a key, it'll set the zero and stop it. Basically, for as long as I'm pressing one of these keys, it's going to move in the speed, the direction I want to move in. Uh, you'll note I'm not doing anything yet for checking the edges. I will do that in a second. But let's just see how this works. Um, and again, I think that using acceleration and deceleration uh, with drag might actually be better, have a better feel, but this will be fine just for this game, testing it. Come back and tweak it later. Doesn't like that. What is not like? Doesn't like that I can't. I messed up. Okay. Is that all? Yeah. I, sometimes I'll lose brackets. Don't worry about it. Here we go. Pressing the left key. Hey, look at that. Pressing the right key. It's kind of moving a little bit after I let go, and I think it's just because of the frame rate, because my computer is chugging to try to handle the recording at the same time. Uh, but yeah. Oh, look, it went off the screen because it was holding it down. Huh. Isn't that funny? If X, why did that? This is less than 8 equals eight. If x is greater than there's a boundary right there. Um, we could variableize these. We could put, you know, something that says this is a buffer zone. This is fine. Again, we're we're doing a fast and loose here. We're doing dirty. That will probably work just fine. <clears throat> and the way this should work is, even though I've maybe the velocity says to move it past a certain point, it'll move it back if it's gone too far. It'll move it back to a, a spot that is within that boundary. And left, all the way left. We'll, we'll speed the sucker up too. There we go. See, I can go no further in that direction. I can go the other way. Let's crank that speed up because that is way too slow. I think. Actually, you know what? I think I think I want to make this a smaller size. Let's um. Let's see, what is a quarter of that? One sixty. Let's go here and say one sixty. Or one twenty. Oops. 
just because I think it will I don't know, just feel a little better. We don't need to have giant graphics. You know, we can quarter everything. So I'm going to go ahead and next come back here and say, let's quarter this. 24, 32. That actually feels, I mean, just because everything's a big square, or big, big square or rectangle shapes, we don't need to get crazy with it. You know what I mean? We don't need to have, it'll look just as fine probably look more like an arcade game at the smaller size than it would if we had these giant these bigger versions of it you know um let's set that to four not you know not quarter let's set to four and we'll see what it looks like this may give us a better uh frame rate and everything too but i think it'll look good i mean Notice how I didn't change the speed. <laughs> it just seems to be moving faster because the size of the screen is now... <clears throat> so the actual game size is actually a quarter of what it was. It's now zoomed in. It's stretched out to fit that, that 640 by 480 uh, canvas. Does that make sense? You gotta see here. Uh, not really. But, um, yeah, so basically it is a much smaller game being stretched out, which will, will look faster... Uh, than before. So I think uh, we could probably speed that up a little more. Maybe it's fine. I don't know. We'll do we'll do two ones. Okay. That is our paddle for the most part. We're done with that. Um, let us put in a ball to have bouncing around, right? Probably the second biggest part of the game is the ball. Ball. Okay. If you know, I mean, again, if you notice, Paxflix was doing a lot of the work for us. All we did here was said, uh, we want a new sprite. It looks like this. Put it here. Move it when the player presses a button. And keep it within a certain range. That's all we did. That's all we had to code for this thing to work, and it's exactly what we wanted to do. Obviously, a more complicated game with better sprites with animations, but you would just set all the animations in here, you'd do all the kind of cool stuff in there. But that's all we have to do because Flixel's Flix Sprite is doing most of the heavy lifting for us. We don't care about it. Same thing is going to happen with Ball. We're going to make it a very simple uh, um, sprite. We might make it square. We might make it not square. I don't. I don't know yet. Um, I think. Let's double check. There should be a way I can draw a shape, a circle. Yeah, I think I can do that. So I can make it. So I'm just double checking some stuff here. Uh, I can make it. A. In here. I can make it a circle. That's that works perfectly fine. I mean, it's, it's totally fine to do that. To make it a square, leave it a square. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. We'll see. Don't feel it. So we're starting out the same way as before. Making a extending split sprite, importing split sprite, and we say public function new. Um, the ball is always going to look the same, but we're going to have a place where we reset it so we don't care about anything like that. All right, we're gonna make it eight by eight. We're gonna make it transparent. Here, and yeah. 
was we're going to go ahead and do This one, or maybe. Um, oh, it's pretty chill. Is it pip delete? Maybe. <clears throat> Don't worry, no matter how long you've been using something, uh, you can always forget it when you need it. <laughs> I don't need to go look it up. Um, I am like pretty sure there is here it is sprite huh we also import it I don't remember how this works This should let me just say using and then use it, but it's not letting me do that, so I don't know. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Don't like it? Don't like it at all? I'm not sure why that wouldn't let's do that. It should have worked. Um, anyway, I'm going to make it say this. Uh, the radius should be 4. And the color. Um, yeah. Thought. Might as well. What, oh, we could do. Red. Why not? Let's make it crazy. Make it red. All right. So that's basically where balls gonna look like. Um, I'm gonna actually go ahead down here and say public. Um, no. Override. Reset. And you'll see why in a second here. We're not going to pass anything. Because the ball should always, always reset back to the same exact position every time. Uh, I don't know what, I don't want to be in a problem for. Maybe this will just call all right, I forget what you said. I'm going to make a new function called spawn. Spawn's going to call reset. It's going to say... Um, how high was that? Was this? We could get smart and have it look it up where the position of this thing is, but I'm just going to screen center it. Uh, I'm going to say... Maybe, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, three, four, six, six. Oh, yeah. Eight, so twelve. Okay. Let's just do this. Let's do this. Um,
when we spawn the ball, either because we're starting a brand new game or the ball got lost and we're, we're bringing it back, we're going to put it at that position every single time. We're also probably going to reset the paddle to be in the same position too. Um, this one, I'm make a capital, I don't know. We're going to say this. Uh, velocity that sets just clears whatever velocity might be going on. I might have to do something here. We'll get cute later on. We'll make it so that, you know, for a few seconds after the ball spawns, you can't actually do anything. Then we'll launch the ball, and then you can start moving the paddle around. Okay. Something like that. Well, how's the ball going to move? Uh, well... Public oops. override update. How should the ball move? We are going to give it some kind of velocity, x and y, and uh, we're going to have it say whenever it hits an object, either a brick or a wall if we have, we're gonna have walls on the ceiling we're gonna add that in a minute or the paddle it's going to basically reflect off of it those things uh in the opposite uh the opposite direction it's gonna bounce off the difference is when it hits the pedal i think we need to change its velocity change the angle based on the movement of the paddle right but for everything else, and actually I'm just reading started, um, it'll just be like a, a an actual rotation. So what we want to do is we're gonna come down here. We're gonna say public static bar start. Start speed. We'll make it be. I don't know. We'll do it again. We'll try 102 distance. What it seems like. And we're gonna come down here. We're gonna say. Um. Public launch. So this will be when next. So when the ball spawns, will be stuck in space. When they actually launch it, it'll launch off in a direction. I think we're going to have it go, we'll, we'll have to pick a random direction that it launches in. Uh, between negative 15, negative 20 and positive 20 degrees, probably. That sounds probably right. <clears throat> so, launch angle is a float. We're going to say. Let's say between hmm. twenty negative twenty into twenty every five so negative four to four. All right. <clears throat> now here's the thing that I have to we'll have to experiment with a little bit. Uh, some places, like sprites, angle starts with zero being pointing to the right. Sometimes some math that Flix will use will say zero is up north on the compass, or at least it used to be the case. I mean, someone might fix this at this point, but that's kind of been a 
an issue that's gone back to day one. I'm pretty sure that in this situation, up is zero for what we're going to try to do. But if it's not, we can we can fix it. So. So, um, we're going to say velocity dot, uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I think, I think for this situation, we're going to need to rotate it negative 90 degrees for it to be going up. Otherwise it'll be going to the right. I think that's, that's right. I'm about 80% sure. And if that's not the case, we can always fix it. This is a big deal. Uh, we're going to say this will be start speed. Okay. So the idea here is if we were going to go in the, in the zero, angle zero, we're going to go as fast as we can, the starting speed, um, in the X direction. Okay. Uh, we're going to rotate that. So. Okay, I think this is right. I don't remember if I have to, if I can just rotate it or if I have to pass it back. Sorry, there's a, like I said, again, little things that's like, man, I, I, I did this recently and I can't remember from life of me <laughs> the right way. We'll try this. It might work. It might be, it might be fine. Uh, that's it. So let's go back and over to Play State for right now. We're just going to see if this works. Okay, we're going to add a ball. Public. Uh, nope. Public bar ball. Ball. Add ball equals new ball. Just base in there. Uh, and we're going to go ball dot spawn ball dot launch okay we're gonna eventually put these behind some timers and things but um i just want to see how this ball launches okay so right now where i'm expecting i'm hoping it goes in one of random directions from 20 degrees negative 20 degrees to 20 degrees as if you know as if zero was north we'll see should go upwards <laughs> off into space and never and never and disappear. Huh. Oh, I know what. Oh, so here's a mistake I made. Also, I hate that circle, but we'll, we'll remember that later. <clears throat> and the aliasing and stuff is, looks gross. I put this in the update and forgot that it's going to call it every single update. So basically we're resetting the ball and launching it every single frame. We don't want to do that. We're going to do something over here where it says of our game started. It's false. And we're going to say if so I'm going to put this bottom. I think that's what I wanted to do. If not game started, true, and done. Okay, so the first time the game is updated, if the, because game started will be false, we'll set the true, spawn the ball, launch the ball, and then not do it again for now. 
and we should see it jiggling, jiggling, jiggling around like it was. It should take off in one direction. And it does exactly that. It takes off. If I reset it, I just want to see. It's just going off in the right directions. I mean, it looks like it's going the right, perfectly right directions. Um... Yeah, I'm worried the ball's a little too big. I'm gonna not make it a circle anymore because I don't I don't like the way it looks as a circle. I'm just gonna make it like four by four by four. Mm-hmm. 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 So the ball isn't looking like a ball right now, but that's fine. I don't, I don't have to worry about it. But, but you saw we could draw a circle on it. It just looks gross to me. And I think the size is a little better now, too. All right. Okay. So now... So now, let's get rid of this, remove this. Oh, this is really good, perfect, perfect. Uh, you'll see what I'm doing that here in a minute, hopefully. Um, yeah, current speed. I just want to know how fast it, I want it to be moving currently. So. Public function bounce. I'm going to say... Direction hint. Uh, so I'm going to have another function on the play state that's going to tell me when it bounces is what we're going to do. So we're going to say uh, switch. Sure. Case. Uh, is this right? Oops. I don't remember. <laughs> There's a way to do this easier, too, but... I think that's right, okay. We're going to say velocity dot y times equals... Um, no, that's not what we're going to do. That would be the easy way out, wouldn't it? I want it to speed up every time I hit something a little bit. So what I want to do is I need to find out what the current angle is. Uh, velocity angle well, equals... Mm, is that right? I don't remember. Mm. <laughs> There's an easy way to do this. Uh, you can also probably use vectors if you know what you're doing with vectors. I don't really use them. I've never learned to use them, so I don't use them. It's probably actually easier to do it with vectors, but um, this is fine for me. What am I looking for? Oh, math. Uh, 
Ankle. Sometimes you just, you just gotta look it up. Just gotta look it up sometimes. No, that's not right. Ah, oh, no. This, this is what I'm looking for. This is named something that I'm really expecting it. That's fine. Ankle dot, yeah, dot, velocity. No, what? Velocity dot x. Velocity dot y. Is this what I'm looking for? Maybe? That would give us our speed and angle. Why is it not liking it? Oh. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. So now we know what angle we're currently traveling at. Um, we also know the speed, but we're going to use this anyway. We're, we, we know what that is anyway. We're going to do current speed... Plus equals. Ah, oh, let's do 10. Who knows? That's, that's fine. We're going to put a cap on it up here, actually. We're going to say uh, public static inline max speed flow equals 1,000. Maybe? Uh, and let's do up here. Public static inline bar speed factor flow equals 1.2. Let's do that. So actually, instead of doing plus, I'm just going to say times equal speed factor. Okay, every time the ball hits something, uh, we're going to find out what angle it was traveling at, and we're going to increase the speed by a factor of 1.2 up to a max. Um, in what's the smaller of the two values for it? Current speed. Or max speed max star speed max speed speed fat yeah I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why it's all different. Okay, that's fine. Alright. <clears throat> now if I've hit something from the top of the bottom, basically I've hit the, I've hit the bottom of an object or I hit the top of an object, then I want to reverse my X direction sorry, reverse the Y direction moving in and reflect The x direction based on that angle. Yes? Yes. How do I do that? Oh, um, let me think. I've done this before. <laughs> It's, um, I might not need this. I might need to do something like new, oh, new velocity. Ooh. 
we'll leave this here for now. I don't know if I need that. I, I, I'm, I'm not even thinking something weird. So basically, if I say new velocity equals velocity dot y something one, right? And new velocity dot x equals. I, I can't get my head around. If I was traveling. No, don't don't change it. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's right. I don't need I don't need this. On the other wall. So basically if I hit on one of the axes, keep traveling reverse the direction on that axis but keep traveling the same the same speed on the other axis yeah uh which in that case we'll say That's right. Okay. But how do I speed it up? That's when this vector stuff's going to come to play, right? Yeah, I think that's... Mm. Don't think I can get away with straight times uh, speed fact. I can figure out the new angle to travel in. Right? Yeah, I think that's what I need to do. Sorry, sorry, everybody. I mean, <laughs> again, I thought this would be easier, but we're, we're, we're figuring things out as we go. Um, this is how coding works sometimes. We'll get this thing working, and then uh, we'll take a break and um, um, continue off uh, another time. Thanks for sticking with me this far and everything, too, if you've been, if you've been following along. Um... Will not get. Look, one is that right? Yes. New. No. X. New. No. Not y. And so now we knew. We we know. We know how fast they were moving. It's the radius. We know what angle they were traveling in. We can throw away the radius, and we're just going to say velocity dot set current speed, which we changed already. Y dot rotate. Week. We're not we are starting at zero zero and we're saying the angle of new angle. Done. We can say new angle dot put and new no. Okay. Uh oh. Yeah. When we call this function it returns the radius is X. The velocity oh, sorry, the angle is is Y. And so that's how we get that to work. Okay. Also, whenever you use these pooling objects, like these points, you want to when you, you want to put them when you're done to clear the memory. Okay. So we've got this bounce function. 
Uh, but nothing's going to happen because we're not telling it to bounce off anything yet. So let's go back here and add a ceiling and two walls. Okay. Uh, ceiling. Spray. Bar. Left wall. Spray. Right wall. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. And we need a little more spray. We're gonna go down here and add them first. Ooh. To make it easier on, our, on ourselves, we're actually going to go ahead and put these guys on a group. All right. A flicks group um, is basically in a, a class, it's an object that can hold other objects in it. A flicks state is a flicks group, it's got a bunch of objects in it, it'll have its own update routine that's in it. Um, and the great thing about that is we can do collisions and things like that on the group as a whole. Otherwise, I have to say, do we climb on the ceiling? Do we climb on the left wall? Do we climb on the right wall? All individually, okay? I won't have to do that anymore. Um, by making this map, I'm going to say, or I'm sorry, this group, I'm going to say, uh, do we climb with anything in the walls group? Right? And then all we're going to do down here is say that, that, and that. Okay. Also, something to note real quick here is the order that we add things to the state is important or to a group or whatever. Um, so in this case, we're adding the wall group first. We're adding the three wall objects to that group. So they're going to get drawn first on the screen. Then the paddle will get drawn on the top of the wall group. And the ball will get drawn on top of the, the panel. So if those things were ever overlapping, that would be the order that we, we see them in drawn. Now, if everything if everything was like, for instance, if, if these three objects were in the same group and we wanted them to overlap in a certain way, we could sort them. The objects at the front of the group of members list would be drawn first, would be at the bottom underneath things. And the ones on the top would be on top of everything else. So if you wanted to have a game that had, for instance, some kind of sorting um mechanic you know that's how you do that would, would be to sort things in the group it's pretty simple um we probably won't need to do any sorting with this game but that's something to keep in mind that the order of what is added doesn't matter if one of the hud that was on top of everything else some kind of ui interface we'd have to draw we'd have to draw it last otherwise it would be behind everything else, you know behind the things that came after it uh adding a group but also a good way to say here almost like a layer this is my walls layer so if i keep adding wall stuff to it later on it's always going to be on this layer so everything in the walls group is counted as the bottom layer right now because it's the first thing i added so even if i come back over here and i said add another wall that wall would be drawn here and be below the panel and below the ball make sense maybe okay uh, let's actually draw these things and make them look like something. So we're going to say the ceiling equals a new, uh, no, ceiling dot make graphic. Uh, we're going to say it's going to be from the, f it's an inch, it's true. Um, and we're going to make it, what color should this thing be? We can make it black, one, two, to make it like hide, like, you know, be, it'll look invisible, but let's make it be like gray or something like that. Uh, gonna make sure we add the imports. Gray, you know, make them all gray. Uh, left wall. 
And you notice not, I don't have to set where this is because it's going to default to zero, zero, which is the top left. Uh, same with this guy here. Um, we're just going to swap these. And he's going to stay on the left side. And we will have to change right wall. We'll have to set the position of that guy in a second. Right wall is going to be dot x equals g dot we. Oh, wait, we don't want him. Sorry, we don't want him to be. <laughs> that doesn't fill the whole screen. We want this to be like two. Uh, two. No. No, I've done this wrong. No, width is fine. Height, two. Yeah, I messed that up weird. I don't know why I did that like that. Uh, it should be as tall as the screen, only too wide. Yes. Minus right wall. All right. So now, in this update routine, we're going to have looks g dot uh, collide. We're going to collide the ball with walls. Uh, the lowercase ball. It's the object ball dot walls. And we're going to say on the notify is going to be on ball if wall. Bam. Uh, it's complaining because that function doesn't exist yet. It will. Uh, we also might want to go ahead and do this now, just so all it's not. I don't forget about it. Ceiling dot immovable equals left wall. Right. All right. The way I'm the reason for that is that sometimes collision will try to push things around to make sure that they collide properly, and if we leave them as is movable objects. Um, they might get pushed off the screen and then the ball hits it. <laughs> you know, we don't, we don't want that. Uh, so, it's just, you know, because we know these guys are never gonna ever gonna move, it's fine. For most other things, it'll probably find not even mess with it. Um, I think this, this just turns off the velocity update stuff that's because these are these are not gonna move so they don't need it uh okay so now we need to go ahead and add our on hit on ball hit wall logic we're gonna do it as a public fun we could do it private and we'll just do it public on ball hit wall uh b is the ball to hit and w is the wall to hit yes Uh, and all we're going to do here is say we ball dot rounds. The direction is going to be um, Let me think about this. The stuff with um, touching, theoretically, you can use that to figure out what where you just touched. You know, if you're touching the floor, if you're touching um a wall but i can't remember exactly it's one of those things where i've used it in the past and it took a lot of work to make it work touching i 
think I just do that. Oops. I think I just have to do that. If that doesn't work, we can do this might work <laughs> i say it might work we're not sure so all i'm doing now uh, just to explain a little bit sorry we've defined our walls we added this group called walls we added the group we added the walls group to the state make sure everything's on the state we drew the graphics form where there's gonna be some gray bottle gray square rectangles that are two pixels wide or two pixels high and we've set them to be on the borders of the screen Set them all to immovable, set them all to moves equals false. So that turns off, they can't be pushed away with collision, and they can't, they're not going to call any, any velocities or acceleration because you don't need them. All right? In our update routine, if the game has started, every frame we will check the collision. If a ball collides with any wall, we call on ball hit wall, which passes at the ball object, the wall that it touched, and all we do is say, bounce the ball based on the direction that it touched, that it's touching. So in theory, if B dot touching, so when, if B hits the right wall, B dot touching will be right. It'll be, it'll be flicks object dot right. This up, down, left, right flag, it'll be right is the flag. So it comes in here. It's going to find out what the, it's going to take the current speed it's at. It's going to increase the speed up to the maximum. Figure out the velocity it was moving in. Uh, figure out what the new velocity is. So if it, if it touched right, it will reverse the X direction it was going in. Figure out what angle it's, it's going to move in next. And set that angle based on the current speed. What we should see when we run this project... And it's always a good idea to have an idea in your head of what the project is going to do when you run it. Don't ever just run it and go, I don't know, and then hope for the best. You're going to you think of what it's going to do so you know what you're looking for. I'm going to expect the ball to take off in a, in a, a random direction away from the paddle, hit a wall or the ceiling, and bounce off of it, and continue to travel, speed up a little bit, and travel at the same direction. Uh, it was uh, the, the same... Bounce off of one, one axis, travel in the same speed. Sorry. Travel slightly faster in the new angle. And if it comes back down, it was not, it's not going to hit the paddle. There's no collision on the paddle yet. And if it falls off the screen, it's just going to go off the screen. And that's it. Okay? We will add paddle collision next um, after this is all working. So we'll see it. hopefully see it bounce off a wall or a ceiling and then hurtle to the ground and disappear and pass through the panel if it happens yeah there it goes boop oh no <laughs> all right so again we expected to have one result and we got a different result why is that why did that happen if 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 we hit X, let's just put some crate. Um, we, yeah, we put no traces in here or our brakes. We can see what, what it's doing. Yeah, why not? Let's, um, put it here. We'll see what new angle says. We'll go down here. We'll see what that says. My guess is that somehow this is not the right thing. I mean, it's not, it's not returning what we expect it to return. Boom. Okay. So it was moving. Up and to the right, so we should see velocity. Um, this object's velocity was zero. Why was zero? Hmm. 
Okay, so that's what's happening. Collision is stopping, is, is setting the velocity to zero when it hits. Okay. Okay. Let's try that with overlap instead. We new process. Check ball. Okay, so the difference between overlap and collision. Collision has some stuff going on that's going to separate the objects from each other and apparently set the velocity y when it hits at zero. Um, I think there's a more simpler way to do this with using um, elasticity. I think it's a value called elasticity. But... Um, I want to have more control over it by doing this current speed. If I didn't care about the speed, I think elasticity would just do it for us. Okay. Uh, okay. So, but overlap should not stop the velocity, set the velocity to zero. Overlap would let us say, oh, they're touching. What do I want to do with it now? Okay. And the other thing with overlap is where collision just have one function. Overlap has two. Overlap allows you to say, um, uh, this is a process. So this, if this returns a true, we actually did collide. So didn't do this. If we return a false, we don't do this. We didn't collide. Okay. So let's just do something like what I'm about to do here, which is, um, actually we don't, we don't need to do it. I was going to say, we're not, we don't have a ball shape anymore. If it was still a ball shape, we might do a pixel perfect check here. So if the hitboxes overlap, check to see if the actual um, pixels overlap before you actually do a collision. But we're, we're not we're not a ball shape, so we don't need to do it. We'll just leave it like this. Um, the last thing I want to do is. Do you want to move a ball um, Right? That's what we're for. Why is this staying there? What? What? Okay, I don't know what's staying there. It should not have a problem with that. I don't know why it's playing. B dot x equals x plus w dot. No, this is correct. There's that, and then there's that. Okay, it just looks up. Up. B dot y equals w dot y plus w dot height. And we don't need to really worry about it. But in the case we do decide to need to worry about it, we'll just make sure that b dot y equals w dot y minus b height. All I'm doing right here is just making sure. Give me a problem. Um, is making sure that when we do touch a wall, we're not partially through the wall before we bounce off of it. We're gonna we're gonna force ourselves again. A collision kind of does this force. There's a separate routine that does this, but I'm worried that that's what that's a, the separate routine is what's clearing the, the value for velocity. So this is a little workaround. It should work. I don't know why that's complaining about that. That should be okay, right? No. What am I doing wrong there?
Am I doing this wrong? Oh. I don't know. I don't know why this isn't like that. That should be fine. Turn up four. I guess this is what the problem was. I don't know. I don't know why I was telling you the, the weird stuff. It should be fine. Yeah. Alright, so this time it should bounce off properly. Ooh, no. Oh. Yeah. It looks right, so let's just see if it goes. I forgot I had a break there. And we lost it. Where'd it go? Let's try it again. Let's try it again. Oh. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's what it's all about, people. This is uh, coding 101. You think you know what's going on and something doesn't work right, and you got to figure it out. All right. So currently, my new velocity is 2 and negative 100. Yeah. Uh, the new angle, which I should have figured out, would be negative 89. And this should be like the other way around. It's really 90. Um, why is that? Oh, is it because... This is a problem with that zero based thing again. The zeros to the right. I'm worried this is giving me zero zeros up. As and then so then everything's out of whack, maybe. Because it's a new velocity. Is. No negative. Oh no that's right. Why is it. Velocity that y. Oh boy. Uh, there's always something you got to figure out. Uh, velocity that y. is zero point six uh huh
Well, I hope this is interesting to people. Like right now, that velocity should be the current velocity before anything else has happened. It looks like it's like a slightly negative x and a very negative y, right? Velocity is a slightly negative x and a very negative y. Okay. Cool. Okay. Don't do that. It's fine. Oh, zero. So it should have hit up. Is that what it did? Um, up is not zero. Is it? Huh. Huh. So it's not considering it touched it. <laughs> All right. I forgot that the touching flag is only set when the collision a collision happens not an overlap. So we can't use this or this. It's always going to say none. Okay, we don't really care. Uh, we're working this out, guys. We don't really care about the velocity at all, other than to say which direction should we be going in, right? Right. So... Right. That's may not work at all. Uh I'm not gonna give us the right angle, is it? If 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 Right slope, basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Guys, I think I overcomplicated this too much. I think we can do all this without any of this stuff at all. Um, 
We might want to bounce routine later on, just for like when we hit a, hit a thing. But I don't, think, I don't think we need it. I don't think we need it at all. We don't need any of this stuff, I think. I think we can just handle it with the elasticity flag and just, um, yeah, I think that's it. Huh. So here's what I did. Sorry. And my problem was I could not figure out how to retain the velocity after the collision happened and also know which way it was touching when I hit easily. Like I, there's a ways I could figure out to do it. It was just, it was going to be really complicated, uh, really complex and, 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 uh, inelegant. Uh, so I didn't want to, I didn't want to do that. Um, so I give, I mean, think about it again. What I was trying to do was every time I hit something, I would increase the ball speed by a factor of 1.2, you know, uh, 120%. Elasticity, is, elasticity basically is doing that for us, I think. It's going to say, whenever I collide, how much should I change my, my, I should bounce. First of all, I should bounce. How much should I adjust my speed when I bounce? And uh, the max velocity is going to say, keep keep it within this bounds, okay? So or 1,000. That might be way too fast. This might be way too high. But the general idea is we don't have to have a bounce function at all. We just have the ball say when it hits, uh, just collide ball with walls and let the internal elasticity handle that. I think that's good enough. I mean, we could get into the weeds and be like, okay, well, if I'm on this side of this object and I bounced, then you know, well, I could do that probably, and it would take well, probably another 45 minutes to get that set up, and it would work, maybe. But I think for our purposes, this already does, I think, enough. It's close enough to what I had in my mind. That's like, it don't matter. Anyway, what we should see now, hopefully, is the ball spawns. It launches off uh, upwards in a random direction, hits the ceiling, or hits a wall, and will bounce off of it going slightly faster until it hits the off the screen we'll see if not i will pull my hair out and then we'll come back to this later and i put a break there for some reason because i'm, I'm, I'm here it goes boop bam now Although I do want to have, at some point, the paddle be able to adjust the direction of the ball somewhat. But right now, just for testing, that should be all we need to do. Um, and then, like I said, what I'll do at some point, when, probably, probably in the next video, we will, because it's already been two hours, <laughs> we will... Um, Tweak that a little bit. So boom, I go. Oh, I gotta focus. I can move. Boom. Oh no. So that shouldn't have happened. But the reason why it did happen is because paddle and removable. It's not set. Which basically says when they because it was off. Uh, because I'm sorry. Because it was false, the two objects touched, and they both push each other apart. We don't want that. The paddle is stationary uh, in space. You know, it's, it's the balls, whatever. Uh, let's fix this. That, let's fix that. Yep. Yep. So far, so good. It's beaten up. All right. Yep, and it went too fast. Um, possibly because the there's some lag going on because of the video recording. Um, also possibly because of where I'm doing the the collision at. 
it might need to be after the update. I can never remember. Sometimes it's better to do it before. Sometimes things are better to go after. Let's see if it looks better here. It also just might have been going too fast. If it, if, it, if it goes faster than like the height of the uh, uh, paddle per second, it might just skip over the panel, I think. That's fine. This looks a little bit better. It's like one, it doesn't look like it's going through. Oh, okay. So, okay. That tells me that this number and probably this number is way too high. This should probably be like that. And this should probably be like, um, that maybe. Let's see. So I don't want it to be super fast our way. I want it to be a gradual increase. You're, you're, you're bouncing around, you're breaking blocks. Um, and then you realize, oh wait, this ball is going way too fast. I can't keep up with it. That would be the idea. And I might need to do some tweaking with the frame rate. Um, you know, maybe I need to draw fewer frames per second, but I can update fast more frames per second. Ooh, something like that. Um, so yeah, so that's what we got right now. So I think I'm going to stop it here. It's been over two hours. Hopefully you guys have gotten some of this stuff and it made some sense to you guys. Please reach out to me with comments, suggestions, um, questions, concerns, anything like that. I am going to um, put this in a GitHub repo that will be public. Um, and I will probably have a version, like a, like a branch for each video. So this will be in branch part one, let's say. And then when, I, when we work on part two, then we go into branch part two so that you can see where we stopped if you're only on the old, you know, on the first video. And I'm going to try to keep that format going for the rest of this. Um, I don't know when I'll get to the next video. It might be later this week. It might be in a month. It might be never. Who knows? <laughs> uh, reach out to me on Twitter. I'm at, um, you can reach Axel Studio. It's A X O L S T U D I O. Uh, on Twitter, you can probably find us on Facebook with this is looking for Axel Studio. Um, you can email me at tim at axelstudio.com. Visit our website at axelstudio.com if you want it's for some stuff. You know, we have other we have games out that you can play right now. Um, check them out. Let me know how you what you what you think of them if you like them. If this is helpful, let me know. If this is totally useless and and you hate my voice, let me know. But hey. You know, maybe soften that blow a little bit. Um, other than that, next time we'll do part two of this. We'll try to get the blocks in place. We'll try to get the lives in place where you lose a life if it falls, you know, if the ball falls through the, through the thing. Um, I'll try to pro I'll probably work on tweaking the paddle movement. I mean, I'm doing this all uh, live. I'm not, like, planning this. Ahead. I'm not going and practicing this and looking at code beforehand. I'm just going to go on live, just, just kind of give them my, my process of making a game like this. Uh, so you can see all the, all the pitfalls and all my, you know, the things we had to go wrong are things you're going to have to experience at some point, I'm sure. Uh, and how we solved them, how we worried about them. Um, you know, head scratcher moments. Anyway, think I've rambled on enough. I will get this uh, uploaded ASAP and check us out on Twitter to follow up when, when the next video is going out or when we're going to record the next one or whatever. And I want to hear your feedback, guys. And please let me know what you think. Uh, let me know what other games you want me to tackle. You know, in my mind, I'm thinking maybe we'll do a Snake game, maybe we'll do a Space Invaders game, maybe a Pac Man game, um, uh, maybe like a space shooter, like a side, you know, like, um, you know, a horizontal space shooter, or maybe a vertical space shooter. Who knows? Um, uh, stuff like that. All right. Um, thanks for watching. Hopefully this is interesting. Hopefully this isn't super boring. And we'll catch you later. Bye.